the three types of nuclear radiation that can be emitted from an unstable nucleus are alpha radiation, beta radiation, or a gamma wave. Gamma ray. So all three of these can ionize atoms. An alpha particle, because it's got a 2 plus charge, two protons and two neutrons, is highly ionizing. A beta particle with its 1 minus charge is not as ionizing, and it's also got a, a smaller mass than an alpha particle. And a gamma ray doesn't have any charge at all, so it's the weakest of the three in terms of ionizing power. Well, what's ionizing? What did we say ionization was? Well, all three can ionize atoms of a material by knocking an electron out of the atom. Basically, what happens is, for example, a gamma ray will have a collision with this atom and give this electron energy to escape the pull of the nucleus. And this makes this atom into an ion, a charged atom, which is called an ion, and the process is called ionization. So, what are the properties of these three because of this strongly ionizing alpha particle, moderately ionizing beta particle, and weakly ionizing gamma ray? We can summarize it in a table. So, first of all, the ionizing power. Alpha particles are strongly ionizing. Beta particles are moderately ionizing. And gamma waves are weakly ionizing. Now, alpha particles, they're strongly ionizing because they have a 2 plus charge and they're quite massive in relation to the other two. So, they're going to have a lot of collisions with atoms of a material, and that means they'll get stopped very quickly by very thin layers. So, they're stopped by paper or even skin. As soon as they go through the layers of the atoms in paper, they'll have lots of collisions, and that means they'll, they'll get stopped by that. The range of alpha particles in air is only 3 or 4 centimeters. Beta particles are moderately ionizing, and so they won't have as many collisions as alpha particles because they've only got a 1 minus charge, and they're much smaller. And they're stopped, they'll go straight through by, straight through paper or skin, but they'll be stopped by thin aluminium sheet. Thin aluminium metal sheet. In air, beta particles go a lot further, one or two meters. Again, they're not having as many collisions. Now, gamma waves are weakly ionizing, so they, they don't interact with atoms of a material very much. And that means they'll travel a lot further. further. They'll go through paper, they'll go through your skin, they'll go through aluminium metal sheet easily, and they're only going to be stopped by several centimeters, several centimeters of lead, or several meters of concrete. This is why nuclear reactors are surrounded by several meters of concrete shielding, because they generate a lot of gamma waves, which although they're you could say they're not as dangerous as the other two. If you have them in a lot of concentration and uh, lots and lots of gamma waves, then they can be um, very damaging to living cells. The range of gamma waves in air is a long way. It's 100 meters plus, and because it's an electromagnetic wave like light, it'll just keep going. But eventually, it will get stopped as it collides with the uh, molecules of, elf, of air and ionize those molecules. So make sure you can describe the properties of alpha, beta and gamma using this table and be able to explain why alpha particles are more ionizing than beta and beta particles are more ionizing than gamma.